Greetings and salutations, friends and family. As many trips as we've taken to California, we've passed by the General Patton Museum, but never have had time to stop. So we decided to make a special trip and head out there just to see what this museum is all about. This museum is dedicated, of course, to General Patton, hence the name. It's not really a full-fledged museum, more of a roadside attraction, but worth a stop nonetheless. After you pay your $11, you get to go into the museum and go into the tank yard, which was kind of disappointing. When you first enter the lobby, you're greeted by a huge map. And this map was developed by the Metropolitan Water District in the 1920s. Twelve expert draftsmen created more than 25,000 pieces of fiberboard to depict the 5,000 square miles of land surrounding the aqueduct route. The map itself weighs close to five tons and is designed to come apart like a giant jigsaw puzzle. The surface of the aqueduct depicted in this map serves more than one million acre feet of water through the 242 mile long Colorado River aqueduct from Lake Havasu to Lake Matthews and finally to Metropolitan's 810 acre foot Diamond Valley Lake in southwestern Riverside County. And of course, no museum can call itself a George Patton Museum without replicas of George Patton's famous Colt revolvers. The Colt revolver that General George Patton carried was a Colt single action Army 45. When he was asked about pearl handles, he responded that they were ivory, and only a New Orleans pimp would carry a pearl-handled gun. The first part of the museum is dedicated to the long military heritage that the Patton family comes from. Then it slowly progresses into George Patton's career, starting off in college and getting accepted to West Point, and then going on to serve in fighting Pancho Villa in Mexico. Following his controversial death, his family was given the option to have him buried at Arlington National Cemetery, but per George Patton's wishes, he chose to be buried with his troops in France. But the museum mainly focuses on what George Patton did at this location during World War II, when he was asked to set up a military training facility to teach U.S. soldiers how to fight in North Africa. This site would be called the Desert Training Center. And while George Patton was called away only three months after setting up the camp and never really did get to train any of the soldiers there, his memory and legacy still hung on. And of course, if you're going to have a military museum, you have to have the gratuitous wall of guns. Now, I was a little disappointed in the tank yard. I thought there would be more of a variety of different tanks and that you'd get to climb on them a little bit more. However, they did have a static tank display set up that you could actually crawl into. So it kind of loses the effect when you have these. So it's an M60A3. So you're not really climbing inside the tank. Now it's mean, you can see how little room they had. That's some uh, cramped area. So you don't get the, there's no turret to crawl into. Put the driver's seat. Yep. You can't even see on the top, can you? Uh-uh. <laughs> there must have been some kind of way you could see, though, like a reflector or something. This must have been where they held the, uh, the shells. I think they just set on phone books. <laughs> Can you imagine driving in that seat with no cushion? For hours. <laughs> okay, so that's the tank chassis and body. Mm 
And then over there is a turret. So it looks like we can go into that one too. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn up the camera to get in. So, so there's yeah, there's a sign right up here that says, uh, "Please keep out of vehicle." Well, that's a bummer. I want to go crawling in. Can you imagine uh, that's the the body and this is where the driver would be there and then you get your crew here, the loader, the commander and everyone, the radio guy? There would be at least three people yeah. in this area. Not much room. Looks like a loader would stand down there. Yeah, probably. Look how thick, though, the armor is. I'm sure it doesn't seem very thick when you have bombs coming in. <laughs> Other tanks are out here. Firefighting and riot control. Three of them are. But then we have over here what looks like a Sherman and a Stewart. Yeah, medium M4, A4 Sherman, and then a M5, A1 Stewart. That's a tiny tank. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say that, that up against the big German tanks, that would be, well, they did get annihilated. You remember what these were for, right? They were used as subterfuge. They had a canvas that would go over top of them. And they, so when the Germans flew over, they thought that they were tanks. Mon this monument is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Army who were trained here at the Desert Training Center during World War II. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're interested in going to this museum, it is a pretty interesting trip, and you do get to learn a lot about General George Patton and the Desert Training Center. And as always, remember to hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button to be notified the next time we put out a video. Thank you for watching.